Hey, Proko people, Stan here. You may remember Tim Gula from our 12 Days of Proko last year, where he showed us his meditative automatic drawing technique and gave us an overview of Riley rhythms for sketching the figure. I was able to film him during an extended drawing session with a live model where he used the Riley method for quick sketch. This is just part one of a three part series. Look out for the other two parts in the next month or two. All right, enjoy. We're gonna start with some two minute poses and uh, full of action so the rhythm lines and their application becomes even more noticeable. And then you'll have a better idea of how to apply them to your own work. So now, this is how I break it down. Start off with the head, C. That's the ear. So I have the angle of the head. Just a very brief but clear features of the head and face. Nothing too involved. You have to keep things on their most essential now. The neck and the shoulder, the angle there. Now I have her chest, the angle, and the arm. See the rhythm? I got the rhythm of the arm just in a couple lines. It's kind of almost like a, well, the reason they're called rhythm is it's almost like as if a, a musical comparison. The pelvic area, the leg. See, nice and simple. That's good. And there it is. That's how like a two minute pose is broken down. But look how much information you've been able to give yourself to come in later if you wanted to and put even more. Okay, go ahead. Once again, I start off with the head. And we have a side view of that. I come in, just put a couple features. I don't get too involved because I don't have the luxury of time to get too involved with it. Get the angles, the cheek. Where her arm is, the gesture the arm makes. See, a nice rhythm to establish that. Now, for those of for the first time seen this kind of drawing, you're gonna have to watch this a few times to really mm, get the full grasp of what all this is, because it's gonna be kind of strange, but you'll be surprised after a couple times how like a intuition kind of starts taking place. And you need less and less explanation, and you seem to understand just through observation. Once again, see, keeping those angles nice and simple, using the rhythm lines to help the action become that much more clear and convincing. Nice and simple. Just keep the shapes nice and simple, but clear. Once again, I start off with the head and the ear because you're not gonna notice, why does he put that ear like? Because that's very important, because that gives the angle of the head, which the direction of the whole pose will follow. So that's why it's like, very important. that be the obvious. And then after I have that, I'll get the angle of the shoulder on the neck. And from there, I immediately come in then and established the upper chest area, the rib cage, the buttocks, and there, nice rhythm to establish where the weight's going of the pose. Another rhythm, nice rhythm. 
and you begin to notice the rhythms more and more easily. A few poses and you kind of like begin to catch on. That arm up in the air, showing the weight. Come in and put like certain identifying marks like the shoulder blades. Get that rib cage, very important. Slowly start making all the forms that much clearer. Okay. Start off with the head and there's the ear. So I have the angle of the head where the view is going. And by also doing so, I get the eye sockets. So now I have a good representative of the skull. Nice and simple indication of the nose. Cheek. Okay, neck. Once again, the shoulder, see? I get the angle, angle of the shoulder, and that also helps establish the rhythm of the pose. Then I come in, the pit in the neck, I'll use that as a, as a marking landmark. Buttocks and hips. Nice rhythm where the arm is. And here too. See all these rhythms. Now you're starting to understand that they're helping get the action of the pose. And now your poses were going to become far more convincing because the action is going to become clearer and more natural thanks to your understanding of the rhythm, how to use these rhythm lines. There you go. Thank you. We'll do another. That's a good one. I like the, I like the gesture. So let's try our best to capture that. Once again, I start off with the head. Mm, maybe I'll lower it a little more because her arm's more raised. And I use the ear to help establish the angle of the view. And then from there, I go in with the eyes. And remember, this takes practice. So you're going to have to watch this several times, at least, to have it really sink in. But it will. Just hang in there. Persistence is what's going to get you where you want to be. And then the pit of the neck, and then the shoulders, the angle of the shoulders. And there's the rib cage, her arm up in the air. This one on the mat showing the weight, helping you use that to get the balance of the pose, making everything that much more clear and convincing. Breasts, showing the angle of the chest. I'm kind of relying on an osmosis kind of effect, you know, yeah. seeing because I remember clearly Fred, when he would teach, like he would explain things, but like, I mean, it just would blah, 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 blah. Because, I mean, watching him was so, like, shocking. Like, how do, you, how do you take that and come out with an amazing drawing? And then, and then after I got past that, then suddenly his words and the, the, the words and pictures started connecting. But it, I remember at first it's like, oh, my God, I'm never going to learn this. This is impossible. <laughs> but I did. Because there is, the, I mean, do not underestimate how, how the, the way your brain can discern kind of strange new information. It's made to do that. Yeah. You're, there's something in your head that's made to like look at things and, oh no, but something clicks. 
for what it is, who knows, but it's a mysterious yet powerful thing, especially with the visuals. My career as, as such started in 1980, and it was started at Hanna-Barbera. And that's where I met a guy named Alex Toth, who was uh, a pretty darn good artist himself. And I started by drawing concepts to um, weird science fiction type shows. Uh, and there I went from there to Bakshi, working on Fire and Ice, where I met Frank Frazetta. And we were, and which was <laughs> a mm, uninspiring film, but it was great experience, and especially working with Frazetta. And uh, from there, I worked at Disney on The Black Cauldron. Then I got a job working in Japan, where I met even more, another whole, whole uh, array and system of artists that opened my eyes even wider. There I went into comic books. I started working at DC on Superman and Martian Manhunter and books like and The Spectre. And then I started on other comics. I, and from there, I then went into teaching on the side too. I've always wanted to teach. I wanted to pro, uh, keep um, the message alive. And uh, I think the most uh, important thing of all is to be yourself. And it's hard to do when you're working on other people's stuff all the time. That's why coming and drawing at the life drawing uh, workshops is very important because it keeps your sense of who you are intact with all the pressures and compromise. So if I could pass on a message, it's that and keep practicing and make sure your heart's in it completely because then you'll see that it's fullest benefit available to you.